scene and the Allegiant movie has come out in theaters. <laughs> So this is part one of the finale of the Divergent movie series. I'm going to start off with my non-spoiler thoughts. So if you haven't seen the film yet, you can stick around. So the movie wasn't as bad as I was expecting it to be. I was pleasantly surprised with some parts of it. And overall, I think it was definitely better than the Insurgent movie. My ratings for these films goes Divergent, like up in the sky, Insurgent on the ground, and then Allegiant here. Maybe a little higher. Not, not here. But like here, I had fun watching it, even though there were parts where I was like, oh my god. The acting was great. We know these actors are fantastic. Their talent shines through. Miles Teller is fantastic, and they give him so many snarky, wonderful lines. I really enjoyed him. Tris and Four have great chemistry, and I love seeing them work together. The acting is great. It's just the actual script, the actual plot line that is... Why? So I think I'd give the film a C plus, maybe a B minus, C plus. Because there is a big thing that I was like, mmm, about. I think it's definitely worth watching. I don't know, I honestly don't know what the next movie's gonna be really. Like I see maybe what they're gonna do, but really, I don't know why they didn't make this one movie. <laughs> I mean, I do know. Money, 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 money. Money! That's all I'm gonna say for my non-spoiler section, so I'm gonna go into actual details about the film now. So if you don't wanna be spoiled, go ahead, watch the film, come back after, and we can talk about it. Goodbye, people who haven't seen it yet. Okay, I feel like I should be wearing orange right now. This is very divergent, not a legion. For some reason, in the film, Tris is the only one who gets to wear a pure white uniform every day. We know she's pure. We know she's 100% divergent. Did you have to dress her up in a white virgin sacrifice outfit every day? The film opens up with these really rowdy trials that are going on in the factionless headquarters. I wasn't a big fan of these scenes. I thought that Kayla was hilarious. I loved Caleb the whole movie. I was just dying. Not I loved him. I don't love his character. But I just thought he, Ansel Elgore, playing Caleb was so funny. He's constantly tripping and making scared faces and being weird and I loved it. That's what you do for family. You do anything to save them and I'm just like, you did it! You didn't do anything to save your family, bitch! Four comes and gets Caleb from the jail that they have him in and then Caleb, Four, and Tris escape in this jeep and along the way we pick up Miles Teller because we can't have the movie without Miles Teller. His snarky side commentary is half the reason we watch the films now. The delivery is so on point with everything. They meet Tori at the actual wall. I didn't know if Tori was actually gonna die, but she did. Don't worry. I actually really liked this wall escape scene. I think it was really well edited and the tension was great. I was on the edge of my seat, excited for them to get over and scared. When they see that the fence has been turned on, the electric fence, and Tris just looks down and she's like, oh shit. She just drops her line and starts rappelling down again. My heart was like, oh shit, oh shit. And then Four comes right behind her. He's gotta back her up. And I just, I really like that scene. I like the connection that Four and Tris have. It feels really strong. It feels really real in this film. It just felt so badass and Tris released her string and she's like sprinted with a bomb and then sprinted away. Four grabbed her and they just shut up the wall. It was, oh, it was so cool. I loved watching Caleb try to climb the wall and he trips and falls. When Four and Tris are getting up to the top of the wall, the second time, Caleb is only reaching the top for the first time. Right before they reach the top for the second time. <laughs> I love when we get to Mars and it starts to rain. Great, now the sky's bleeding. <laughs> and then the rain's pouring down and the four of them are stood underneath some shelter and they stay on their deadpan for a few seconds before Miles goes, this is fun. I'm glad we did this. <laughs> And then we hit the barrier. All the Mars army people are waiting. And this is the part where the technology is at its most ridiculous point. Don't worry, you're safe with us. Our bubbles will shield you from the radiation. <laughs> they bring down the drone and each of our characters gets sealed up in a stupid bubble. And the bubbles flow up and lock onto the side, the outside of the spaceship. And our crew just kind of sits there chill, looking around in their bubbles as they cruise on top of the spaceship to this weird DNA structure that they claim is the Chicago O'Hare Airport. It just looks so stupid. And they're like, 
touching. I don't understand why that was necessary because the DNA people do go outside. So it's not like they're not allowed to go outside. Let's just say that this still happens and it's all good and dandy. It's a big point in the book that we've never been up in the air. We've never seen the earth and how big it is. This is the equivalent to the airplane right now. And we have no reaction like that at all. I think Trish says, whoa, this is so cool. And that's the extent of it. And then we get to the compound and it's time for the shower. <laughs> My favorite part. It starts out fine. They each go into their little shower cubbies. They have to strip their clothes. Then they have to stand on this platform. I don't know why they did this. Why they did this. And this orange slime comes down from the sky. First, it's like a circle of orange slime that goes over them. But then the slime converges to their body. Like it's come to life. It just molds around them like jello. And just, we have the most ridiculous shot of Dritz from above. And then she screams and the slimes around her and it looks so stupid. She looks like a cartoon and we hold on it for a good few seconds. And I'm sitting next to Natasha watching this and I'm literally like, oh my God, what is this? I can't. I don't know who let that get through editing. I would have loved to see Veronica Roth's first reaction to seeing this shower scene. What the was that. I love the line from Miles Teller and I can't remember the exact line, but it was something like, well, that was the best weird shower I've ever taken. I just laughed hysterically at it. In this movie form of Allegiant, we've added a ton of drones and a ton of unnecessary technology. And I was really expecting it to go a different way from Allegiant since we have another movie. But this film basically followed the storyline of Allegiant. You know that glass elevator that goes special to David's office? It takes like an hour to get to the top while it slowly circles the DNA. <laughs> Why doesn't he just have a regular elevator? Why must they take a floating elevator that goes in circles around the outside of the building? Why doesn't he just have a regular straight up and down? It would be so much quicker. Another thing I think they did a great job with in this film were the fight scenes. They're always really exciting. And the flight scene where Tris realizes that they gotta get out of the DNA and go back to Chicago and four was right. She steals that spaceship and it is just such an exciting thrill ride watching them try to get back to Chicago while David tries to shoot them down. I didn't understand how they lasted so long unscathed while Trish was literally driving upside down against the earth for like 30 seconds. But I was on the edge of my seat nonetheless. <laughs> They go to the fringe. What the army people are doing is just killing the adults and stealing the children and then wiping their memories so that they can use these children for whatever they need them for. Which doesn't happen at all in the book, but okay. Running with this idea. Christina is there with Four. Why doesn't she speak up and have an opinion on this? Four like freaks out because he can obviously see. It's obvious. It's not like a secret that everyone around them is stealing children from their parents. So Four gets upset and Christina just just kind of goes along with it. It doesn't say anything. I don't like that this script kind of just made Christina there for convenience. So whenever she's needed, they take her along, but she doesn't have an opinion and she doesn't speak about anything that's going on. They take him in a plane, tell him they're gonna bring him to Chicago, but actually they're gonna murder him. And of course, Four ain't gonna take this shit. He takes out the entire plane, except for the creepy guy who's always with Tris. This creepy assistant to David. I couldn't not look at him all the time. He was in the background of shots like, Tris is talking to David and blurry in the background, you have grudge assistant staring. And it turns out this guy is actually on our side. This guy actually doesn't like David and he helps for and Tris send a message to each other. And Tris gets to Chicago. Now this is where things get really similar to the book, but at the same time, different and nonsensical. In Allegiant, now if you haven't read Allegiant, I'm gonna spoil the end. If you don't want to know it, you can mute the screen till this picture of Allegiant disappears, okay? So in Allegiant, Tris dies for the city of Chicago so that they don't get their memories wiped. The memory serum is controlled from the Chicago airport and it is released over the city of Chicago. It would hit everyone and erase everyone, reset the experiment. This is something that they've done before. Tris dies stopping this. She sacrifices her life to stop the release of the memory serum. Now, in the movie, the serum is in the city. It's accessible to the city, which doesn't make sense because whoever would need to reset the experiment would have to go into the city 
to do it. But whatever. We're all in the city. We need to stop the memory serum from being released, right? We don't want everyone's minds to be erased. This is our family and our friends and all that jazz. David has sent Miles Teller to be his button pusher for the serum. Everything would have been fine and dandy if they stopped the serum from being released into the air. But the serum is released and it's literally everywhere. It's in the air. This isn't like a lake that's coming. You have to be hit by the water to be affected. It's in the fucking air. And it's all around our characters. And for some reason, this gas does not affect any of our characters. Miles Teller is literally in a room that's filling up with gas. Somehow it's not affecting him at all. It's in the air! And he hadn't even pulled up his shirt to like cover his face. If I were them, I would have ripped off my shirt and tied it around my face at least. They don't have gas masks on. This is a gas that's in the air. If there was knockout gas in a room that you were in for more than like two seconds, it would affect you. It was in the hallway right next to Ansel Elgort when he pushed that guy into it. It was two feet from his face, but no, he wasn't inhaling it. He was just next to it. It's like a monster. I don't know, why weren't the people outside affected? It was coming out every vent next to every single building. It was just so stupid. I can't, why did it affect anybody? And then Tris and Four open the door to the room where the memory serum is coming in. At that point when it was coming in on Peter, I thought Peter's memory was gonna be wiped because that's something that happens in the book and it's hilarious. Peter memory is the only one of them that gets wiped. They're in a building full of gas, full of memory wiping gas, and no one loses their memories. Tris stops it ages after it started and it's fine. Things are fine, even though it's still floating around the floor. It hasn't dispersed into the air. It's just stayed in its orange clumps on the ground. I, I can't get past this. The movie made no sense. So Tris goes into these underground tunnels trying to figure out how to turn off the gas. I was having like stress flashbacks from the book. Oh God, this is it. This is where it happens. But of course David wasn't there. The next movie we have to assume is just going to be to kill David and take down David. Tris had a clear shot at David when she was leaving and stealing his aircraft. I thought she had a gun in her hand when she walked up there and he was up there and she talked to him and told him she was gonna steal his aircraft. I thought she was gonna be like, and dead. It looked like she was gonna do it. It felt like she was gonna do it, but then nothing. She just doesn't kill him because we need him for the next movie so that we can have a purpose. David and her should have faced off at the end of this film. He should have tried to put the memory serum out there and then they should have phased off. It feels like we're shooting this out for no reason at all. The city's already saved. What is he gonna try to kill the whole city? Is that gonna be the plot of the next one? Is it all gonna be about the death serum? Because I was expecting that to come into play in this movie. I thought that that serum that Miles showed Evelyn and Evelyn gave to her ex-husband was gonna be the death serum. And then it was just memory serum. I was expecting Tris to have to face off against the death serum and she didn't. So I'm assuming that's gonna be in the next movie. Amy, the death serum in the book was protecting the memory serum. Ah, oh, and Tris didn't even have to fight the memory serum. Like, I bet she could fight the memory serum because she can fight all serums, but they didn't have to do anything. The memory serum was just floating around them. It was like being in a room full of dementors and not feeling any of the effects of it. That metaphor was really out there. There's a lot of grounded metaphors that would have worked, but that came into my mind. Ugh. Oh. So from this conversation I've had with myself, now my new theory for the next film is that David has control of a death serum that he would just want to sprinkle over Chicago and maybe this is controlled from the DNA and Tris will have to go back to the DNA and when I say DNA I mean the Chicago O'Hare airport that looks like a strand of DNA and she'll have to stop him and four will have to stay in the city and make nice with mommy oh my god can we talk about how stupid mommy was when she pressed the button and she thought that it was only gonna wipe the memory of the people that weren't on her side how does that make any sense at all Evelyn four is at the door and he's like Evelyn you're gonna wipe the memory of everyone in the city what no what I mean it's a gas! Are your people all wearing masks? Are they protected? What do you think the gas knows your people from the other people? <laughs> Who wrote this and thought it made any sense whatsoever? When I just, uh, I mean, I still enjoyed the film. Like I got some enjoyment out of this film. Like I said, I there were a lot of positives. The acting was great. The fight scenes were great. There were exciting parts, but 
I, this end was so ridiculous. The plot went so wonky. You saved the city, Tris. You stopped the memory serum. No, she didn't. The memory serum was out. It was released. Like it was everywhere. It was in the room with her. Maybe you concocted some far-fetched reason why they weren't affected. Like maybe in this world, the memory serum is heavier than the air. So it only floats along the ground. Yeah. No, this is ridiculous. It was floating in whole hole. Always. Like it would diffuse into the air like everything does in a small room like that Maybe you could argue that for the people in the city Which I wouldn't because we know that they just spray it down to the city and everyone's memory gets erased But maybe you could argue that in the film for the city outside. There's a lot of air There's a lot of places for it to diffuse Miles Teller was in a room a closed room with gas all around. I think my favorite part of the film uh, was the shower. My favorite serious part of the film, I think, was when Tris and Christina and Ansel were flying back into Chicago because I was like, <gasps> And I liked when Four took down that plane and uh, got out and he was like, yeah, just tell Trish I left you behind. She'll know that's a lie. I would never leave anyone behind. I'd love to hear your favorite parts, the things that you had issues with. What were your thoughts about the flubber in the shower? I'm Christine. I'm Annex Team May on Twitter. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.